The Red Wedding sits at a 9.9 .9 out of 10 on IMDb, which is literally insane for an hour long episode. It would probably be a 10 out of 10, but you know, some people want to be different. But when this episode came out in spring of 2013, it was a global sensation. Celebrities were talking about it, even shows like South Park were parodying it, and it truly felt like a once in a lifetime spectacle. Not only did the episode itself go viral, but people who read the books and knew it was coming, they filmed their families and friends reacting to it, which made everything feel so much more special. But what made this plot twist so goddamn good? How did this plot twist strike deep to our cores? Well, believe it or not, the first seed of greatness for the Red Wedding didn't start during the Red Wedding or even that episode. It didn't even start in season 3 or season 2. The first seed that made the Red Wedding so great was right here. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. That's Game of Thrones version of you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain and be invited to a ditty party. From the Dark Knight of course. And not too long later, Rob Stark's father Ned Stark dropped one of the worst Game of Thrones performances of all time and got his ass executed. This right here was the first big shock of the show. Because you think the story is about Ned Stark and Ned gets capped? And while you're grieving for Ned Stark, wanting him to be avenged, Rob Stark becomes the new light of the house Stark. So the viewer is naturally going to assume that Rob Stark now has plot armor. And when I mean plot armor, I don't mean like literal plot armor like Jon and Daenerys in the last few seasons. I mean more like the story is going to go in like Rob Stark's favor and the story is going to be him sitting on the throne or something. I mean the Starks are the main characters. And in the story, Rob Stark is owning everyone. Rob Stark is dropping a prime LeBron James level performance against like Tywin Lannister. And it just completely throws you off any brutal death for Rob Stark. Because the show leads you to believe that if Rob Stark does die, he will die a very honorable death in like battle. It's either that or victory. And it did seem like victory was on the way for Rob, Catelyn, and the Starks. Rob Stark is a child. Who's won every battle he's fought? He's a boy and he's never lost a battle. He'll risk anything at any time. Because he doesn't know enough to be afraid. But here's where things get crazy. Rob Stark has a few blunders in his path. He starts to fight with his own men, not listening to his advisors, and he starts losing his own men. Which now just made the war into his enemy's favor. The Karstarks have marched home. The young wolf has lost half his army. His days are numbered. Theon Greyjoy murdered both his brothers. These blunders are needed for the Red Wedding to hit really hard. Because if Rob Stark continued to win all of his battles and continued dropping a LeBron James level performance, then eventually the viewer would be like, yeah, he's gonna die soon. Because viewers can easily sniff out shock value when it's coming. That's why the last few seasons of Game of Thrones were so mid. If you make your character perfect and the road ahead of them is very easy, the viewer is gonna know something big and bad is going to happen. But if you write a downfall of a character, viewers are now going to think that those things that happen during the downfall is the big climactic struggle of the character's story. And that's why this plot twist was so perfect. The Red Wedding happens the moment Rob Stark was supposed to start gaining the momentum. Rob Stark made his mistakes, but now is supposed to be back on his feet. But instead, this happens. Mother. The Lannisters send their regards. I get Vietnam flashbacks every time the Lannisters send their fucking regards. Because the whole sequence was genius. I mean the music that plays during this Red Wedding, I mean come on. The Reigns of Castamere. The song is basically telling a story how like 25 years ago Tywin Lannister told the house to pay their taxes. They said nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. And Tywin instead of asking one more time, he instead drowned the entire castle. You know just how a man handles business. I explained the full story of the Reigns of Castamere in my Tywin Lannister video so watch that if you're interested. But the song is literally like canon aura. You know how people like John Cena and like CM Punk have their own theme song? Well so does Tywin Lannister. The Reigns of Castamere would be Tywin Lannister's theme song in WWE. And when Catelyn hears it, it's like god damn I'm, I'm cooked. 
Tywin making sure this song plays during the deaths of these characters is straight up mind torture. Imagine dying listening to a song that's sucking off your enemies who just defeated you and killed your kid. That's like Kendrick Lamar forcing Drake to listen to Not Like Us while Drake is getting jaunted by hooligans that Kendrick paid. It is some dark dark stuff. And you can just tell Tywin loves this song, he is like a TikTok celebrity who makes like edits of himself. But man, it was brutal. Even the Game of Thrones actors themselves just felt so much pain during the scene. So if the actors who read the script were going crazy about the plot twist, imagine how the rest of us felt. These actors were like genuinely just going nuts. Lord, I, I knew about it. I knew it was going to happen. I saw some of the guys the day after they filmed it. And I still cried. I was still really shocked. Una's death. That, that just being stabbed in the belly was just so pat Like at the table, just from behind, and just that, that, the, just the anguish of like, you could almost see like it wasn't even like she was caring about herself dying. She thought about her baby dying first. And it was just, so, wow, so powerful. When I read it, I was gutted because Rob Stark was kind of a favorite of mine. And then seeing it was even worse. I was so, so upset. It's like, you're not allowed to do that. The internet reaction was the best part of it. I thought it, that was just incredible how, how, uh, how much it, it hit people. It really seemed to affect a lot of people's lives in quite a, a significant way. When Caitlin knew she was gone, that her son had gone, it was heartbreaking. I mean, apparently the, the crew were crying and all that. Well, was not surprising. Brilliantly, brilliantly done. Also, a super funny thing in the interview, which you should watch after this video. All the actors are talking about how sad they were seeing the deaths of these characters and their favorite characters and everything. But Charles Dance, who plays Tywin, he stood his ground and just said this. Tywin is just doing what he has to do. It's a feudal society that he lives in, and he has to retain his position. And um, he can only do that from being strong and ruthless. But the hardest part of the Red Wedding for us fans to digest, the fact that us fans really just don't want to believe, was that the Red Wedding is 100% justified. Now justified might not be like the best word for some of you, but you have to at least admit to some degree it was inevitable. And the reason why it was either inevitable or justified is because of this girl, this baddie, Talisa. Listen, I don't blame Rob Stark at all. I don't care if I'm a king or a peasant or a ginger. If a girl looks at me like this the way Talisa looked at Rob Stark, I wouldn't mind my dire wolf's head stitched on my dead body. But nonetheless, Rob Stark screwed up. The moment he broke his vow against Walder Frey to marry his daughter, Walder Frey had every right not to trust the Starks. And if the Starks are losing the war, which they were, Walder Frey has every right to team up with the Lannisters and win and protect his people. I know it sounds shitty, but I think if most people were in Walder Frey's position, they would do the same thing, besides breaking guest rights. And Rob unfortunately got what was coming to him. Rob Stark broke his oath, and that is the main reason why this is happening. We will take no vengeance! You already swore me one oath right here in my castle. You swore by all the gods your son would marry my daughter! That's why this plot twist is so heart-wrenching and makes me want to kick a fat kid at Kmart. The Starks low-key deserve this. It's dark, but it's well-deserved. One dig at a powerful lord is enough to die in this world. And that dark tone is what made us love the show in the first place. But sometimes it can screw us and make us hate the show as well. The author of the books who wrote The Red Wedding, he said that The Red Wedding was so painfully hard to write for him that he skipped over it. And he finished writing everything else and then came back to The Red Wedding. And it's crazy, even the plot twist had even the author tweaking. There is a sequence in the third book, in Storm of Swords, uh, oh, Jesus. that I will not refer to by name, but it was the hardest, <laughs> hardest thing I ever wrote. Really? Uh, I, I, that, that, I finished that entire book, and that, that scene occurs about two-thirds of the way through the book. And when I reached that scene, I couldn't write it. I skipped over it. I wrote the rest of the book. I wrote all the postlogue. And then when the entire book was done, I said, well, I can't postpone it anymore. I have to go back and write this scene. And, and I did. It was very, you, very painful. How do you but feel about it? But it had to be it? done, you know? It had to be done. It's the story. The story has its own demands. You gotta be happy for George, man. I know he had a probably like a love-hate relationship with the Game of Thrones TV show because the writers didn't listen to him for like the final few seasons. But I'm sure in 2013, George must have felt like a king or a villain when the whole world was reacting and going crazy over the Red Wedding. He must have felt like Malcolm X when he marched on Washington all those years ago. George R. R. Martin was him during those years. I remember one tweet that someone posted uh, the day after the Red Wedding episode aired uh, that said, now you know why your nerdy friend was really depressed 13 years ago. <laughs> um, 
and and there was a certain amount of truth to that. I got letters at that time uh, saying, you know, I hate you. I I threw your book across the room. Uh, I'm never going to read you again. I threw your book in the fire. That was a good one because it was like I threw your book in the fire, and then three days later I went out and bought a new copy because I had to find out what happened next. But the red wedding in the show and the bread wedding in the books are a little different. If you're someone who doesn't want spoilers for the books, then I suggest you click off, motherfucker. But it is weird, you can argue that the TV show version is darker than the books and some of you will say that the book version is darker than the TV show. And what's crazy about that is the author himself surprisingly said that the TV show version is actually crazier. He said it in an interview where he was giving his inspiration for The Red Wedding. The Red Wedding was based on a real life historic event called The Black Dinner. And George said he turned The Black Dinner more graphic in the books and the show turned it even more graphic in the show. If you think Game of Thrones is violent, read some Scottish history. Well, you, you, drew a, you drew a Scottish history for the Red Wedding, of course. Yes. The Red Wedding was loosely based on the, the Black Dinner, as, as they called it. Uh, but of course, once again, I turned it up to 11. <laughs> and then David and Dan got hold of it for a TV show and turn, turned it up to 14. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, you can always, uh, always turn it up a little more. And yeah, in the books, Rob Stark's wife doesn't die in the Red Wedding. In the books, Rob was like, nah, bitch, you stay here, you're not invited. You ain't that important. And she lives. And it makes sense, in the books, she does have a pretty large role to play in Jamie Lannister's story, I guess. But I'll explain that in another video. But I personally would argue that the Red Wedding is more darker in the books. Because in the books, you can actually hear Callan's thoughts, and her thoughts are disturbingly insane. She thinks Ned is with her, and my god, it's just dark. Just, just listen to this. It hurts so much, she thought. Our children, Ned. All our sweet babes, Rick and Bran, Arya, Sansa, Rob, Rob, please Ned, make it stop, make it stop hurting. The white tears and the red ones ran together until her face was torn and tattered, the face that Ned had loved. Catelyn raised her hands and watched the blood run down her long fingers, over her wrists, Beneath the sleeves of her gown, slow red worms crawled along her arms and under her clothes. It tickles. That made her laugh until she screamed. Ned, someone said. She's lost her wits. And someone else said, make an end. And a hand grabbed her scalp just as she'd done with Jingle Bell. And she thought, no, don't, don't cut my hair. Ned loves my hair. Then the steel was at her throat, and its bite was red and cold. That is some dark stuff right there. Darker than the TV show? I'll let you boys decide. But one thing that we have to give credit to right now is the acting. The acting of The Red Wedding was truly perfection. I'm not an actor. The last time I acted was in like a Christmas play when I was like in the seventh grade. But you gotta give it to the actors here, man. And it's funny, if you watch the behind the scenes stuff, the actor who played Rob Stark, when he got stabbed, the first time the blood bags in his costume didn't pop, so they had to redo the scene multiple times. And after he filmed The Red Wedding, he went on a plane with blood all over him because he literally just died on the show. And yeah, imagine being on a plane and you see a bloody Rob Stark sitting right next to you. You know, it was the end of the show and it was a traumatic scene. And, uh, I, you know, I, I managed to get on the plane uh, covered in fake blood, uh, <laughs> crying because I was kind of upset at the end of the whole job. And I kind of looked, I think I looked like I'd murdered someone and then got on a flight. <laughs> You were escaping. <laughs> I, I would think sitting next to you would. No would one's raise. Me. <laughs> no one's me. But the Red Wedding will forever be a staple of the Game of Thrones TV show, and arguably television itself. It's not my personal favorite moment in the series, that will always go to Tyrion's trial. But even I can admit that the Red Wedding will always be number one to most people when they hear Game of Thrones. Tyrion, Jon, and Daenerys are all cool and had amazing moments, but still. To the casual viewer, when they think of Game of Thrones, they will always think of The Red Wedding. Or at least 9 times out of 10. But yeah, that's it for this video. Like, subscribe, and peace, peace.